What up, though? It's Calico, Landslide, fucking with Dedication TV. Subscribe to the network, man. Keep on pumping that good shit out. Keep on putting that good energy out in the world. Dedication TV, we dedicated, baby. Yeah, yeah, what up, what up, what up? What's going on, y'all? Salute to everybody in the battle rap community, man. It's your boy, Acito. Oh, man. It's been an exciting ass weekend. A little tired, man. A little tired, man. But uh, it's all good, man. It was very, very worth it. Shout out to Atlanta. I really love the hospitality. I really enjoyed myself. Uh, if you did not see, uh, I did a couple of recaps of the Max Out car from Saturday. I got a lot more recaps to do. So I will be dropping those on the channel throughout the week. But I wanted to do a recap of my in the building experience of the riot car you know what i'm saying shout out to Gichi Gotti. shout out to the riot network you know this was my first riot car i know this is I'm, this is not the first time that they've done an event at uh king of diamonds i believe they've done it maybe twice or maybe one time before i can't remember exactly but i know it's not the first time that they actually did uh an event at king of diamonds now i had my own little worries about that because this is not a battle rap venue you know what i'm saying this is a strip club people are coming here for <laughs> to see some females you know what i mean they trying to see some, some baddies eat some good food because they definitely had some good food on the menu even though i'm gonna get to that point about the food um i was just a little worried and at the same time too you know there was a lot of battles on this car bro it was a lot it was like 14 battles on the car and it started late. It started like around five that it set on the flyer. But it actually didn't kick off till I think a little after six. Six or seven. Because it was people on Twitter basically saying, yo, what's up with the event? Why hasn't the event started? And I'm just watching it on Twitter. I'm in my hotel and I'm just like, yeah, nah, this because I actually went out and uh I did some I did some, you know, uh, you know, driving around and stuff. I visited a couple uh spots. That I'm gonna uh, do a, uh, some recaps on a little later on that I'm gonna drop because um, you know this is the 50th year anniversary of hip hop so I definitely went through Atlanta and saw some of the landmarks and y'all gonna love y'all gonna y'all gonna love that y'all gonna love that but this is about the riot card okay um, so let me let me before I get into the battles right let me get into my whole experience right so I pull up to the to the event. Um, it's dope, you know what I'm saying? Like, I see a lot of cars, so I'm like, okay, it must be packed. The energy must be crazy. I get outside, I see my man Mickey Fax, chop it up with Mickey Fax. I see uh, XL out there. Uh, I saw Kells out there from OSBL. Who else did I see? I didn't end up running into Geechee. Geechee ended up coming out. Um, I think No Bars from Hip Hop Is Real was out there doing interviews and stuff like that. So it was just, it was just cool as a fan, you know, to just to come to the event and then you see you know what I mean, one of the goats, you know what I'm saying, come out and, and just, you know, give you a handshake and say, yo, I appreciate you, you know, for coming out, you know what I mean, like, I really felt that love and that energy, like, before I even stepped in the building, so shout out to Geechee for that, Geechee was, Geechee was very humble, he was checking on people, you know, th throughout the event, making sure everybody was good and comfortable, you know, um, but I, I really loved that, you know, so I got in the building with no problem, I get inside, I see the crowd, I see the pit, of where the battles was being held because I thought they were doing it on the stage but they didn't do it on the stage they did it actually on the floor so there's like a somewhat of a dance floor that they you know they kind of congregated around and did the battles there so um so when I get in there you know I notice before the um what battle was it that I, I, I walked into because I wrote it down um was it no it was a uh, NXT NXT and clone so prior to that they were saying like they didn't have uh the mics for the for the uh for the artists you know what i'm saying so when i got in the building i just hear a lot of talking like if you look on the, another thing when you look on the balcony like everybody's there for one everybody i mean everybody hit me holler ill will you uh official kcj rain um shit. it was so many people in there bro I mean, damn, I saw you, I saw Nunu Nails in there, I saw Beasley in there, Debo was in there, uh, Every it was a lot of people, it was people I did not see at Max Out, well, some people that I did because they were on a car, but it was people that flew out just specifically for this particular battle, which was super, super dope, 
So as soon as you walk in, you know, you see like the top level is kind of like the VIP and Hitman Holla got his crew up there and then, you know, Goods got his crew and John John and Don, like it was just crazy. Like it looked like an all-star event. That's how I felt when I walked in. But as I'm getting, you know, situated inside the venue, I'm noticing I'm having a hard time hearing the battlers. It would be a point where some battlers will have a very loud vocal projection and some would, you know, it wouldn't be as loud. Where if maybe they're rapping, their back is towards you and they don't normally turn around and rap to the crowd, they just rap into the camera, you can't really hear the material. And I kind of suffered from that for a few battles, for a few battles, you know. Um, but like I said, when I got there, I saw NXT and Clone. That was a fire fucking battle, man. Yo, y'all got to put some respect on NXT, bro. He is fire. He is fire. I thought he did incredibly good against New Jersey Twerk. Even though I had Twerk winning the battle, I thought he did very, very good. And he did very good here. Um, I will say this before I get into, you know, the battle. Throughout the whole night, be besides them not having mics, you know, and, and it being very hard to hear. Like, the setup is very comfortable now. Let me, let me tell you this. They have chairs and stuff, so if you get tired of sitting on your feet, you can sit down. But the only kicker to that is if you sit down like somewhere in the back, they don't have the mics hooked up to the speaker system. You know, they got speakers all through the club, but there's no mics. So you can't hear. On top of that, you got people up on the top just having full-blown loud conversations during a live tape. The shit was just so disrespectful and annoying, bro. Like, you got people drunk. You got I know you was people in that didn't even care about the event. They're talking loud. The bartenders are talking loud. The strippers is talking. Like, it was just too much, bro. I was getting super irritated. And I and I got there like half halfway of the event. I can only imagine for somebody that was there from the very beginning and had to deal with that all night. All night. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, because they didn't run on time, they didn't they didn't get a chance to finish all the battles. They still had two battles that they, 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 uh, they didn't do was Bad News and Wise, which... Shout out to Geechee. They shot that. They shot both of those battles. Uh, Cocaine Blue. I forgot who opponent was, but they shot him outside, which was dope, dope. And Geechee actually said he's going to drop both of those battles on YouTube today. I believe he just dropped Bad News versus um, Wise, so I'm gonna watch that battle. But um, yeah, man, they want a time restriction because them strippers they wanted to get up there and get that money. You know what I'm saying? They're like, man, fuck this battle rap shit. Man, we trying to get the money, man. Soon as like the third round end of Geechee's battle, if you look, you can see the stripper on the pole. She twirling around and shit. There's no music. And she's shaking the ass and the niggas there throwing money. There's no music playing. Soon as Geechee finishes finish his round, they start the music. They get us the hell up out of there, bro. Get us the hell up out of there. It was, it was wild, bro. But uh, like I said, I got there for NXT versus Clone. That was a fire battle. Clone did his fucking thing too as well. His vocal projection was perfect. Like, I could hear every single line. I couldn't hear everything from NXT, but I caught like a good, a good portion. Like if there was a lead up to a bar, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't hear the leader, but I could hear the punch per se. But this is just gonna be just my in the building experience. Um, you know, recap. I'm gonna do a full in depth. You know, once I rewatch the battles from the live taping, and I'm gonna do an individual uh, recap. But for NXT and Clone, I'm leaning more towards NXT, bro. Two one, it was very, it was very debatable, very debatable. There's no clear winner in my opinion. Um, I had Clone taking the first, I had NXT taking the second, and I felt like NXT kind of edged him on that third round. He had some crazy ass buildups, bro. Like that was that was a good back and forth, very good back and forth. Um, after that, it was Hansel uh, versus Eunice. This was. Yo, in my opinion, bro, this was probably one of the best battles on the card that I was actually able to hear. You know what I'm saying? I was actually able to hear. Like, as soon as one battle was over, I just moved right on up. You know what I'm saying? I moved right on up. Um, this was fire, bro. Shout out to Eunice, man, from Maryland. You know what I mean? I, I believe he's from PG County. He's down with uh, Tay Rock. And uh, Hansel is uh, EFB. I'm very familiar with him. He's fire. He was actually on the Tyler Perry show and all that. He's had a couple battles where people kind of bring that angle up. But uh, this was a fire ass back and forth. And they actually had $1,000 on the line. They had uh, Real Deal as a judge. Uh, Marv won. Wes, uh, no, um, McConey. I called the nigga Wes McConey. <laughs> Pardon me, y'all. Um, who else they had as a judge? 
was KD no KD wasn't a judge uh Mickey Fax Mickey I think Mickey Fax was a judge as well but uh it was somebody else too I can't remember I can't remember exactly but it was a thousand dollars on the line um me personally me personally I was leaning more towards Hansel but I felt like to me the the I don't know. The first and third is very debatable. The second is clear, though. Eunice got the second very clear. I feel like maybe it's the third because I felt Eunice's first round was his weakest round. I felt like he wrote up after that. So if I really think about it, I think about from the material and the reactions and, you know, paying attention to how everything was constructed from both battlers, I think Han uh, Hansel, excuse me, took the first round. Eunice took the second round, and I think the third round is where the debate comes. You know, that that may be a preference. I think that might be a preference. But I'm, I, me personally, I'm leaning more towards Hansel, but I believe the judges gave it to Eunice. I believe he won the $1,000, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was just, it got a little loud once they did the judging, and then they just quickly just went to the next battle. That's one thing I will say. Like, there, there was no long intermission. Like, I think they knew because they started late that they were on a time restriction. So as soon as one was over, they got right to it, right to it, right to it. So I really, really loved that. Um, now, then we get to Vixen the Assassin versus Chilla Jones. Jesus Christ, bro. First of all, Vixen the Assassin. Vixen the Assassin. I got to give you a round of, round of applause. I got to give you your flowers. You did your motherfucking thing. You wiped the floor with this nigga. I, yo, I, I literally had Chilla Jones beating you 30. Clear. I thought clear. But no, I was wrong. I was wrong. I based it off, you know, previous things, your interviews, you know, how you felt you were motivated and how things panned out with the uh, A-Ward battle and the Jazz battle. And, man, I was bugging. Boy, was I wrong. She came in there and set the tone for the Wody and Cody battles. Oh my God. She was, yo, she was scheming. She was punching. Her setups was crazy. Delivery was crazy. She wasn't sticking on the gun bars. Like the she made the proper adjustments with her material. And that's what I felt like was missing with her because, you know, I understand she's from the Midwest and Midwest, they ain't no slouches. Like they get it, they get it popping out there. But for her, you know, she's a girl. She's beautiful. You know, she's pretty girl. She don't really give me like the town boy vibes per se, but there's just the believability of her talking about guns and pulling straps out and all that. I, it was just kind of hard for me. You can have a couple bars cause you know, women do carry. So I ain't mad at that. But some of the shit, it was just like, it was repetitive. And I felt like in this battle, every single round, you didn't stick on that. You know, you were angling, you were talking about, you know, certain, um, certain topics with uh, Chilla Jones. Then you were refraining it back to yourself. I just really thought you did an excellent job. And you and you were marketing that OnlyFans. I respect the hustle. I'm pretty sure them numbers went up. I know they went up. And then you had the moment at the end of the battle where you turned around for the camera and showed the key. I'm going to tell you right now. Yo, Vixen is bad in person, bro. She thick. She looked like she lost some weight in the front. Skin looked real good. She got a beautiful smile. She smelled good. She walked right by me. She right away bought me to touch Geechee during a battle. I'm, she, she's bad, yo. She's bad. She looks 10 times better in person. I say she look bad on okay, camera. I'm just saying in person, she just like, she just has a, a energy about her, yo. Like a real, real good energy, man. It's like, how can you not root for her? You know, so I, I'm glad that I got a chance to see that. And like I said, I want to give you your flowers and apologies, you know, as coming from me as a blogger because I, listen, I, I was a little you know, critical on you because I didn't like the trajectory it was going where you kept losing and losing and losing. I will say this, Vixen, I think the small room is good for you. I think you shine, you're one of those battlers that shine perfectly in the small setting. I think you should stick to that. I don't think you should really go to the big stage. Don't like, don't have this 30 and then go right to URL and go to a big stage. Don't do that, like get cooking. Keep cooking, stay, stay in the small settings, stay in the small rooms, 500 capacities, the intimate settings. I think you flourish excellent in the small room where people can really like, like own in on what you're saying 
and you don't have to worry about the heckles and the bullshit of the crowd. Let's keep it real. The small room is, is starting to become what's, what's, what's hitting now. You know what I'm saying? The big stage shit is cool, but I don't know, man. It's a lot of shit that goes into that with the big stages, depending on where it's being at. But um, Chilla Jones, man. Damn, Chilla, you let me down, bro. Like, I didn't give you a round, my nigga. Not a round. Not a single round. Like I said, I'm going to watch it back again, but in the building, Vixen was just, she was just styling on you, bro. Like, bad. Like, bad, bad. That shit was crazy. I'm glad I ain't bet on that, because I would have been pissed. <laughs> I would have been pissed. Um, so after that battle, Nitty, I believe it was Nitty and uh, Jazz the Rapper. Now, I tried to go to the bar to order some food. Because I'm like, you know what? I'm getting a little hungry. Because it was like a little, little brief intermission. But I'm like, no, let me get let me get something to eat. So the girl, one of the strippers, you know, well, bartenders, I should say. she, You know, she's like, oh, you want to order some food? Come here. I'm going to take you over to get some food. So she takes me over. And uh, Lady Caution actually comes. And she's like walking with me. Because I think she's going, you know, to where the food is. And um, she sees Ill Will. And I guess they had a private conversation. Like, Ill Will, you need to get something to eat. Cause you know what, it will look. You look a little saucy, will. A nigga, it will look a little saucy. Nigga, funny as hell, but he look a little saucy. So we get over there. The girl was talking about they all out of food. All they got is fries. I'm like, what the fuck? Yo, they menu. They had lobster tails. They had vegan, vegan uh, chicken, uh, vegan burgers. They had wings. They had a lot of shit. I'm like, how y'all run out of food? I'm like, god damn. So I'm like, shit. So me and Elwell both like, I don't want no fucking fries, man. I'm good. So I see Gaddis come out. Gaddis come out with her credit card. Like, nah, yo, you owe me some money. You sold me some chicken that y'all ain't got none. So the girl like, oh, um, I think I think the girl went out with some chicken for somebody that they can't find. So we give. She's like, nah, fuck that. Give me my money. I'm, on my, I'm like, damn. So I got up out of there. I got up out of there. But I was chopping up with Elwell and Lady Caution. Cool as hell. Cool as hell, man. But uh, I just went back. You know, to the pit where the battles was at. And um, Jazz the Rapper versus Rum Nitty. Now, this battle here, I'm going to have to go back and really watch the live tape. Because I was in the corner, not a corner, but I was on the side where this girl was just talking so loud throughout the material. Me and like four other people were literally telling her to shut the fuck up. Please. This bitch just kept talking, bro. I'm just like, yo. Why are y'all coming to events for battle rap and y'all not even paying the shit no mind? I, I mean, at the point, I can't even get mad because it's like, bro, why are y'all booking this shit in a strip club? Like, come on, man. Like, so I was missing a lot of material in between. But it looked from what I from what I from what I saw and what I was hearing throughout the battle, oh, uh, Rum Nitty had some crazy ass haymaker. Like the 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 punches that I was hearing from Rum was crazy bro crazy and then jazz was getting she was getting crazy too so i'm just like damn you know what i mean i'm trying to like write down some bars but i'm like yo, i can't really hear everything i'm here just bits and pieces so i can't even really give you a distinctive you know opinion as far as for me but i will say this in the building a lot of people had jazz 2-1 a lot of people did have jazz 2-1 you know, that was the conversation once the battle was over. Like I said, I got to watch it back again. They both was going going crazy. Like, on the floor, like, they could hear everything. There are people that were close. Like, if you were literally in the close section, you could hear. But, you know, they were going crazy. So, I don't know. I don't know if they were just going crazy because other people were going crazy. I don't know. But, like I said, the people that were around the area, just like, shout out to Hurricane Do, Mickey Fax, and a couple other people, you know, they were going around saying that Jazz got it 2-1. Um... So like, hey, that's 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 how I was looking, bro. But the main event, the battle that I came all the way to Atlanta, Georgia for, Coffee Brown versus Geechee Gotti. I will say this: I got to hear a lot of the material, a lot of the material. I ain't really missed nothing because I got close. I got close. I had a nigga in front of me, had a big ass head, that kind of was blocking my view, but I was able to hear everything. Now, this battle, in my in my personal opinion, I'm saying this is my personal opinion. Okay, this felt like it's leaning towards a classic back and forth. Now, in the building, if if they would have had you know mics and everybody couldn't have been able to hear the material fully, because I know some people didn't hear everything. I just think the overall like feel for the battle would have got appreciated a lot more. I feel like it got robbed because it was in this type of establishment. But 
for y'all at home, I'm very curious to see. Let me know in the comment section because I checked Twitter. I talked to a couple people in the building. Now, for me personally, I got it very debatable. Very debatable. I got Geechee taking the first round clear. I got him taking it clear. I got Coffee taking the second round clear. For me, it comes down to the third round, okay? The disrespect from these two was off the fucking chain, bro. Like, Geechee had, I think it was in the first round, Geechee had a crazy scheme where he was talking about how, you know, he embraced, prior before that, you know, he opened his ball up. We got Geechee Gotti versus, why he was on uh, OnlyFans or something, something with, with dirty, uh, <laughs> with dirt under your feet. Like, he called it a, a ill will looking bitch. I was like, yo, this nigga, yo, the level of disrespect from both of them was crazy, bro. It was crazy. It was crazy. Yo, coffee hat. Yo, coffee has some fire in the tank. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. I right, oh. Coffee was, yo, coffee second and third. She was, especially that second. Yo, coffee had a bar where she said, she said something about putting a gun on the tripod. And, oh, my God. I wish I wrote that down. That bar was, yo, that bar literally shook the building. Then Geechee had a bar, too, where, you know, when Tay Rock was like, you my brother, so I can't kill you. So I turned my head. Geechee had a bar, something similar to that, but he flipped it and he did something so like I, I like I don't stand up, so I so I kneel down and shoot a oh my god. I, I'm probably fucking it up. Yo, if you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. That yo, the way he set that up was so crazy, bro. The whole build, like they all had room shakers in there. I'm telling like they had room shakers. I see people saying Geechee was 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 ass or Geechee was light. That wasn't I seen better. No, Geechee was in rare form. This was the disrespect. This was like Geechee versus Sue Sir. You know what I'm saying? Like he was in that type of bag. He was not playing with coffee, bro. I don't know what battle y'all was watching at home, but he was he was on her. And she wasn't playing neither. That's why I say this battle was leaning more towards like live up to the hype as far as the material wise. Now I do would like to see this back on camp. You know what I'm saying? So I can really, really give a strong, affinitive answer. But for me, it comes down to that third, man. I'm low-key leaning towards coffee, man. Second and third. But I I know Geechee, I can't remember all the bars. Geechee has some fire shit. I don't know. That This, this might be one of those battles where you're literally going to have to do a bar for bar breakdown. You're going to have to. You're going to have to, man. Like, Geechee had the scheme, you know, saying he was trying to school coffee and help her. Then he started talking about how she was smashing, um, there was rumors of her smashing Charlie Clips, but she was actually smashing another Harlem rapper. Then he said K, like he was referring to K-Shine, like that was crazy. Then he followed up with, you was fucking, uh, you, was, you was fucking a couple of them at the same time, but I was trying to train you in a different way. Yo, when he said that, wow. Room shaker, room, yo. The haymakers, the punches, the disrespect in this battle, what more could you ask for? for? They gave it to you both sides. You know what I'm saying? For me personally, I feel like this battle definitely lived up to the hype. This was one of the most, you know, dynamic battles for me. Um, like I said, man, I think I would have really loved it just being in my hotel because I, I think I would have loved this this event. Okay, so y'all see I got coffee 2-1, right? So the other battle, like I said, they did that outside. So now let me wrap it all up for y'all. I ain't mean to make this drawn. Let me wrap it on up for y'all. So if I had to grade this event one through 10, right? I'm going to give it, even though I got there late and I'm glad I did because the battles didn't start on time. For me, in the, in the building experience, I'm giving it a three to the four. Three to four out of 10. And the main reason why is because I could not hear the material. I couldn't really appreciate the material from all the battles. I couldn't feel it. Like I had to like really bump and be, you know, body to body with people and shit. Like it's just for 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 them to have so much chairs and space in there. Like it could have been spread out. Could have had a couple people yet yeah, standing up, but it didn't have to be that way. Especially if y'all were just gonna rap to the camera. You gotta think about it. A lot of them rap to the camera. They didn't rap to the crowd. So their back is towards us, right? So we can't hear. Like you have literally have to walk around to the front entrance of KO of, of King of Diamonds 
and stand in the front of the, uh, of the entrance to hear everything. But you can't stand there because you can't block the entrance way. So it's just like, they weren't rapping for the crowd. They were rapping for the camera. And I just didn't like that, man. Like I spent all this money to come to this event to not really enjoy it and hear the material. So I was really kind of disappointed in that aspect. Um, and then the food, I really wanted to try the food. They ran out of food. So I wasn't really feeling that, but I will say it was a lot of beautiful ladies in the building. I will say that the ladies were looking behind. I'm not even talking about the bartenders and the strippers. They was bad too. They was, they was bad, but it was some beautiful women in there that was fans of battle rap. I had a couple conversations, you know, just talking about what, you know, the battles, the max outs, like it was some really beautiful, very smart intellectual women in the building. I'm really starting to see a surge of females coming to battle events and i love that shit man because i don't want to be at a sausage fest bro like i max out i was talking to this, this one girl she was from brooklyn and she was like she was getting gay she was catching all the material and everything and you looked at her like man, what you doing in here like you know what i'm saying like you, you fine and shit not to say you know you gotta be ugly to be an event or nothing like that i'm just saying like she she just didn't strike me as somebody to be in a hot ass room at a battle rap event, you know what I'm saying? But she was in there looking good. She had a bag, you know what I'm saying? She had a Jordans on, like, I don't know, man. I, I just love that, so. But I said, for me, it was, I gave it a three out of four. But like I said, I love the overall, you know, atmosphere. The atmosphere was dope, but I came there for battles. You know, I didn't want to engage in conversations, you know, loudly and be disrespectful to the people that were battling in Avocado that was taping the event. Cause I was like, damn. I know that footage is probably fucked up because I know he's getting all that noise in the background. And I don't know how many times we had to tell people to shut up, keep the noise down. So I hope they'd never do another event here. And if they do, they have to have mics. You have to have mics in this building. I have no problem with the building, bro. Because you could have had all those niggas talking, but if you got the mics and it's going through the speakers, it's going to overpower that and we can still hear everything. So if they would have had that, I probably would have gave this event maybe an eight if they would have had the mics. Because that would have easily bumped it up four points, five points. And I really would have enjoyed, you know, the battles. And I think a lot of us would have enjoyed it more. But, you know, shout out to Geechee, you know what I mean? I think he apologized on Twitter for, you know, the experience, you know, some of the fans didn't have. Because I know some of y'all had issues with audio on the live pay-per-view as well. So I think he handled that. I think they're um, updating the uh, BOD on Caffeine. So let me know what y'all think though in the comment section, man. Let me know some of the other battles that did go down, like Top Floor Lou. I didn't get a chance to see that, but from what I was told in the building, uh, Top Floor Lou actually lost. He actually was choking, stumbling throughout the battle, and that was a one-rounder. D.I. the Henny Man, uh, shout out to D.I. I missed his battle. Um, I didn't really hear too much feedback from his battle or who won or who lost. It's crazy, the nigga that he battled, I was actually chopping it up with him throughout a couple of battles. Like, me and him was just talking. I didn't even know he was a battle rapper. That was the crazy part. But um, I'm definitely going, you know, look out for that. So, let, when you know, once I get the VOD and I sit and lock in, I'm going to do my justice to watch the rest of the battles and do, you know, recaps for individuals, you know. Because I feel like both of these, regardless of anything, this was a great look for the culture of battle rap, okay. You had Max out, then you had Geechee. And... The love and support was tremendous for both events, okay? And that's what's important. We got, you know, we we can give our constructive criticism, you know, without it being hate and without us being disrespectful. But at the same time, you know, we have to give them a chance to make the proper, you know, corrections, you know, and, and do better for the next events, you know? So that's why I'm giving, you know, my personal critiques and hopefully somebody from the Riot League sees this and you know hopefully they see you know the feedback from other people you know that were in the building and that you know purchased the pay-per-view the same thing with arp you know i don't know arp is going to have to do something as far as i don't know setting the stage up a little bit better or maybe getting an actual stage in the blue room so the ballots stand up a little higher so people can actually see everything or maybe get some screens on the wall you know what i mean something of that nature but other than that with max i really had no complaints but that's just how I feel about, you know, Come Bearing Gifts Part 2. Shout out to Geechee Gotti once again. Shout out to Coffee Brown, Rum Nitty, uh, Jazz the Rapper, Vixen the Assassin. Um, 
everybody on the card, man, that did their thing. Like I said, I will be doing another full in-depth recap of each battle. But let me know what y'all think in the comment section of the battles that you did see. It's your boy, Acito. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all the love, y'all. Peace.